Hello, everybody. It Hi. is the 20th of February, and we are live with Barbara Beckley. She is out at the Aeon building out up north of Chicagoland, and I'm going to let her introduce us, introduce herself to us. Am I old? Hi, everybody. This is Barbara Beckley. First, I have to thank Manir for welcoming me to do an interview with her tonight. This evening, yeah, it is this evening. Wow, it's like 8.30 this evening. I am in Chicagoland area. I'm in the Lincolnshire area where I work at Aon Risk Services, but that's just one of many of my hats that I do. And I'll get more into detail on that a little later in our interview. But I just want to thank Manir for giving me the opportunity to talk because she is just such an awesome, awesome person. I call her one of my favorite angels. So thank you, Manir. Thank you so much. I know that you work in the Eon building. Um, if you just tell us a little bit about yourself so we all know what you do and who you are, what you like. Okay, you know I can go on and on because I have so many hats. So you, I need to pick like maybe two out of the four. Huh? <laughs> Well, okay, since you talked about Aon, we'll talk about that real quick. That's not my passion. That's my job. I call my job my investment money. And I say that because the money I make at my job is my investment, first of all, to make sure that I can live and have a house over my head and everything. Secondly, to go towards my passion. And my passion is to, I have a women's network group that I started last year. Women's Prosperity Network, Chicagoland area. And the other part of my passion is being a professional speaker to help others grow and know that they have a voice. So at Aon, I've been at Aon Insurance. It's an insurance brokerage. I've been here for 18 years. I've been doing insurance for over 30. Now, don't count that because then you're going to know my age. So we're not going to even go there. We're just going to say Barbara has experience. <laughs> that's, <So I'm>, <laughs> that's it. That's all we need to know right now. Great. She knows, she knows a lot. So that's good. I like the way you're looking at it because most people look at their jobs and are, they feel it's a trap and they don't know what to do, but you've got quite a few hats. So you said you had four hats, but you're talking only about two? Yes. Yes. Because I know we don't have that much time. We'll be talking all night. And I know that you need to relax. <laughs> but yeah, the first hat I want to talk about is something in Manier, you're part of this too, is the Women's Prosperity Network Chicagoland chapter. Now, this is part of an organization that started in Florida by three sisters. And yes, I always say they're blood sisters. I found them over a year and a half ago online where I was kind of just looking for something positive, you know, something to empower me as a woman and just move for move forward what I want to do in in my life, career-wise and just everything. So I found a link. It was Woman Prosperity Network. They had a lot of awesome tips, uh, how to brand yourself, how to just basically empower yourself as a goal. And the biggest thing that I liked when I found them on, on, excuse me, on the internet was they call it a co-op where women come together on a monthly basis and talk about their, their expertise and they help each other to grow. So the philosophy from them, and Manera knows this, is called the one, where you're the one for another person. So if I have an expertise in accounting, let's just say, and Manera has an expertise in coaching, we can talk together and she can help me coach people in my accounting business where I can help her understand more about accounting for maybe her business. And that's how we become the one for each other. And that's what it's all about. I always tell people we should not be talking about we're on our own island. I can't, I just don't know how much I hate that expression. Where, well, I'm on my own island. No, why be on your own island? Let's all come together and then we can all be prosperous and we can all grow together. I call that collaboration. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I found that, you know, I'm working on my coaching business as well. And I found that it's very hard to go stand in front of a company or client, prospective client, where mm -hmm. you're trying to see, you know, and they've got a bombardment of a lot of people. But if there is a client or somebody who is already providing them services and you are in front and they are in front of you and they collaborate to bring you, that client is more apt to listen. Yep. But it seems like everybody out there will just want to do the same thing and they just want to take the whole pie for themselves. Yeah. But I like the philosophy because the sisters have the one where 
they create the oneness and makes you feel very special. Yes. And I hope our group will, I hope our group as a chapter in Chicago is doing that with the women that meet every month. And that's what we do. And we, we meet with different topics every month. And it's not just me standing there looking at, you know, everybody staring at me saying, okay, Barbara's going to talk about a topic. We're going to write some notes down. And then we just go on our merry way. It's more so me being a facilitator and just putting out questions and thoughts and tips. And then you come together at each other's tables and you discuss and you just don't know how much of a smile I have on my face every month when I see the women come together and that light bulb just goes on when you know that they met somebody or they're talking about something that's really passionate to them, that's going to help them grow, not with just each other, but even in their own lives. And even with that, even taking it on even further, move, maybe helping somebody else's life outside of the event. It's all about bringing value to each other, right? So you there have. There we go. You talked about that earlier today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you love you love bringing value, but you have to know your value first. Yes. And yes. that's that's all about it. Well, that's awesome, Barbara. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how. I mean, it's eight thirty almost on late now, and you're mm -hmm. out, out there still, and you have to go home. So I'm going to have to finish this faster. Oh, that's but, okay. I'm good. Long as you're good, I'm good. <laughs> Let's talk about the um, books that you've read. You like learning, I believe. Oh, I love learning. You're forever learning. I always tell people, if you don't feel like learning, or if you don't feel like you can learn or grow from others, then you might as well just say goodbye. <laughs> and I mean goodbye like leave, earth, earth, whatever you got to do, because it's going to be forever. I don't care if you're age 6 to 16 to 20 to 105 to 50 years old you're always going to be learning. I mean, just from the millennials alone, I'm learning so much. And before I had, you know, I have to admit, I have to admit when I first was learning some of the millennials and how they do things, I was like, Oh my God, they're doing this. Well, what are they doing? What are they doing? But then I had to open my mind. It's becoming an aware and giving people chances of seeing what their talent is. And they have a lot of it. They have a lot. Just like I, you know, my saying in there where I say, you have a diamond in you and let it shine. They, as a limit, they have so many diamonds and then we just need to let, we need to let their diamond shine. And I say that as the older generation, we have to give them that chance and listen to them and really listen to what they're saying. So um, I really like how, um, you know, by, learning and growing from other people. Now, my favorite book, because I know you're about to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a psychic. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> now, I've I read many books, but it's going to be funny because we're doing a mastermind, myself and Manira, on um, John Maxwell, No Limits, Taking the Caps Off of Your Capacity. I'm telling you, I am blown away from this book. I am blown away because... I am learning some of the limits that I put on myself that I did not even know I was putting on myself. And by reading the chapters and, and saying, oh my God, is that a limit I just put on myself? Did I just say I can't do that? Did I just say that somebody's in, 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 in front of me and I can't move forward? That's a limit. That's a limit. And I tell myself, I said, nope, nope. I don't care if everybody in the whole world say, Barbara, you cannot do that. I'm going to try to find a way. I mean, even, even if you don't get to that point, at least you tried. And that's what I always tell people. The hard part, the, bit, the worst thing to do is want to do something and you didn't try to do it by leaving this earth. Because that's sad. At least you tried. Yep. Yeah. I feel the same way. So I, I've read a lot of books as well. And then the, the, I spent, and I'll tell you this, two years. I spent two years um, trying to give the exam of the project management exam. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I don't know, there's a limit that I just cannot overcome. Mm -hmm. And I asked all those people, including my daughter who's taken the exam, they never got a raise. The companies never saw that as a stepping stool for them. Wow. So I said, I'm looking for a job. They'll never give me one, even though I have a certification. So I just stopped it, but I know the concepts. I know everything. So I was in a meeting today with somebody and I was talking to him and rattling him things that I was surprised at myself. I was like, oh, I know this stuff. Only I don't want to give the exam. <laughs> so 
<laughs> it's the material that counts. Yes. Good. I mean, I yes, you, we do put a limit on ourselves and we try to. I met a young fellow the other day, very young, and he said he he, he makes about thirty thousand dollars every month. Mm-hmm. Every month. And so he was telling me, he goes, Manira, there's one thing that I don't hear is when some people, when I have a conversation and they tell me I can't three times, mm. I tell them I have an app installed inside me. And if I hear one more, I can't, I'll mm-hmm. shut up and I'm not listening to you anymore. And <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. that. I so like I use that. that. I said, I'm going to just steal that. And he goes, yeah, yeah, steal it. But the thing is, when we say we can't, mm-hmm. that's when we, we just chop our heads off. Yeah, we do. We already put that, we put that, you know, that we were talking about blowing out the calves. We already put that limitation on there because we already said what, not once, but twice, but three times we can't. So our mind is, see, that's why the mind is so powerful because once you put the words go into your mind and you continue rehearsing, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, then yeah, then your body is going to react to the whole thing that you're talking about. That's true. So you need to replace those words with I can and I'm going to tr- do this and I'm going to try to do the best that I can instead of saying I can't. It even makes me feel better when I say I can. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Well, what are you passionate about? You can't tell? <laughs> no. I am passionate about people, women in general. And I'm not squaring out the men. I love the men dearly. But my niche I found now, and that's my second passion that I was going to tell you about, is a professional speaker. I want to be a motivational speaker and not only just motivate, but help transform ladies coming out from not having a voice. And the reason why I say I want women to learn their voice, because I didn't have one. Just eight years ago in Toastmasters, I'm going to put a shout out to them. It's an organization to help for your communication leadership, building your skills. But you know, I didn't even talk. I was the shyest person in my company eight years ago. I didn't speak to anybody. The only person I told you was my manager. I had to speak to her because I had to talk to her and my clients over the phone, you know, but I didn't like was out networking and talking and getting to know people. And my manager came to me and she said, Barbara, you are awesome at what you do. You've been here for 18 years. You know, we have your reviews every year. You know, you're on, on mark with everything, but we don't know who you are. <laughs> you don't talk. You come in every day, you come to your computer, and then you go home. She said, I know you want to get higher than this, this level that you're at right now in this company. I know you want to do things. You got to, you got to, you're going to have to learn how to communicate better. So saying all that, and that was eight years ago, I went to the Toastmaster Club. In fact, she pushed me into it. I always tell her this. I said, Carmel, you pushed me into this club. You just like pushed me like a little kid, like, you're going to go in there and close the door. <laughs> and... Um, Eight years now, moving forward, not only that I have been spe- I've been speaking, I've been doing a lot of leadership roles. I'm doing one now this year within a Toastmaster term and outside. I, I've been mentors to so many people. I've been coaching so many people, and I am going to continue to do that because I'm paying it forward. I told myself, if I learn how to learn what my voice is and be able to just jump out and talk, then my goal is to make sure that other people that feel the same way knows that they can talk and they have a voice too. I don't want anybody telling anybody, well, you don't know how to talk or you don't say the words right or the way you say it doesn't sound right or you don't know what you're talking about or you don't have the education. I, I told all those words and all those that was going through my mind, that's what stopped me because I felt like I couldn't speak right. Who knows how to speak right or wrong? We all have our own way of speaking, point blank. Everybody has that diamond. So they need, you need to talk. And that's what I want moving forward with my professional speaking, not only have, having women know how to use their voice, but also learn how to take whatever tragedies or whatever happened in their life and turn them into stepping stones for something positive. So I have a lot of stories in my own life that I'm using to guide me to make keynotes so women and men understand that if there's something that happened in your life or somebody passed away that really was special to you and they, maybe they were murdered or what have you, or what have, whatever the case may be, that you can take that and don't hold on to it and let it be an anchor for you to say, I can't do anything else in life. 
but use that as saying that, you know what, I'm going to use this to move forward and to show that I can do what I need to do. So don't let that event paralyze you. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And I have many events in my life. There's one, and I didn't know if I should bring up the book right now, but I am in an all women's book that's coming out in March. And I'm not, I don't want to say too much about the story because then people won't go out and read the book. No, <laughs> but, um, but, but give us the title. The title is My Rock. And um, as it's my rock, do you know what your rock, your foundation is in your life? And basically my rock is my father. Uh, he, and when I was 17 years old, he was, he was, when I was 17 years old, he was murdered. And um, that just shattered everything around me because he was the person basically that would get up every day that would make sure that I knew what I was doing when I was going to school. He would hold my hand, would tell me, Barbara, you encouraged me. Everything about what I needed to do, he was in my life. He was just my, my life. He's my rock. And, you know, I go through the book of how I dealt with that and how I learned so much from either I could stay back and say, you know what, I'm giving up hope, or I can move forward and say, I'm going to be a legacy for my father because he would want me to be a legacy to move forward. So that's basically what the chapter is kind of about. I don't want to get, like I said, more detail, but um, just letting people, and that's just one, one story of a few more that I have that I want to speak on. So people know that don't let that hinder you. Don't let that be that, you know, that every time you talk about it, that's an excuse. Well, you know, I can't do this because you know this person passed away or you know this person hurt me. No, because when you think about it, the person that passed away would want you to be there. They would want you to move forward. That is so true. That is so true. But you, so you had to find your inner strength. To yes. That. And that's an awesome thing. I mean, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, so you talked about your defining moments. Mm -hmm. And I think the book is one. Talk and being in Toastmasters was another. Mm -hmm. Why did you join Toastmasters? Well, like I said before, I wasn't a type of person that would. I was an introvert. I still call myself an introvert. Some people like, some people meet me now and they're like, Barbara, really? <laughs> you talk so much, you know, so I said, well, it's funny because some people say you talk so much now. It's like, I can't keep up with you. You're on Facebook live. You're, you're promoting here. You're talking to women there. How are you introvert? I said, I, I'm still an introvert. Uh, but between joining Toastmasters and really working the program within Toastmasters, and that's why I tell a lot of people, it's one thing to join a club within Toastmasters to learn, to get better with your communication skills and doing speeches and doing like, um, off the cuff impromptu speaking within that club, but you have to go and you have to talk. People always ask me, well, Barbara, how do I improve my speaking? How do you improve it, Manera? Go to Toastmasters. Well, that too, but what's the main thing? You yeah. have to talk. <laughs> you have to communicate. I don't care where you're at. I mean, I'm on an elevator. Hi, how are you doing this morning? It's sunny out or it's rainy out or ooh, it's kind of dreary. You're walking down the street. Hey, how are you doing today? You're in a store. How you? You got to con keep communicating so you can keep basically learning to communicate. Because as soon as you shut yourself down and you don't do it anymore, then yeah, it is going to lack. You're, you're not going to feel, you know, your best speaking in front of people because you're not doing it on an everyday, every constant basis. That's true. That's true. You you have to you have to put yourself out there. You have to do it. You have yeah, your comfort zone and you have to just keep, keep it going. So that's why I tell people in Toastmasters, out of Toastmasters, how do you get better at communicating? You talk, <laughs> you communicate. Well, that's, that's awesome. So for somebody who wants to start Toastmasters, just go to a meeting. Yeah. Usually it's, it's toastmaster.org. You can go on Google and, just type that in and it's going to say find a club at the top and you can click on there and it will ask you for your zip code and maybe your address too. You can put your zip code in there. It will show you all the, this, this map and all these little clubs where they're at. And you can click on the, the certain, I think it's like a little um, dots and you click on the dot and it'll tell you like what's the club name and where they're located at. And it will tell you the times that they meet. And is this free? Uh, no, it's 40, no, I gotta be, yeah, it's $45 every six months. 
the first six months when you join as a new member, it's going to be $65 because $20 of that goes towards your little workbooks that you, I mean, basically the path that you'll take in order to start your path for education through Toastmasters. So that's the $20, but after that, it's $45 every six months. Okay. And to me, it's the $45 every six months that I, that I spent that's so much worth it. It is so worth that money. Because when you think about it, if you go to colleges and stuff and doing this on a, a consistent basis, they charge you in the thousands. And this is, you're working on this twice a month at a club meeting, maybe an hour, an hour and a half, being able to communicate and you get feedback. It's not only just talking to people, they're going to give you feedback on what you might have, you know, you need to tweak a little here or there. They'll tell you how many souls you said, how many uhs, because those are filler words we call them. Instead of just saying, oh, or so, you want to just take that breather and then you go, you move forward. And that's the kind of things, concepts that we talk about within Toastmasters. That's awesome. Yeah. So let me go back to the WPN that you talked about. So you said this is a chapter beginning, and I, I'm a part of it, So, but I'm going to ask for the, for the audience as well. So why, um, why did you start a chapter here? I mean, why, why you, are you, you, you started the chapter here because... I started a chapter here because I got on the phone with the sisters at Women's Prosperity in March. And I was, when I was going back, going back a little bit, I was online when I found them and I found their phone number because I seen so much interesting information they had for women and to empower the women with different topics they had. So then I seen where they had chapters, like certain chapters within like Florida and New York and stuff. Did not see a chapter in the Midwest. So I'm talking about Midwest, like Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, nothing. So the back of my mind, I was getting a little bit upset because I'm like, we have some powerful women in this Midwest. Why don't we have a chapter? Why are we you know, coming together and, you know, learning from each other? So I got a little bit, you know, you could tell I'm still a little, I was a little bit upset about that. So I made the phone call and one of the sisters answered the phone. And I told her, I said, you know, I love your, you know, your website and how you're empowering women. And it seemed like you have a lot of interesting information. I said, well, where's a chapter in the Midwest? She's like, you know, Barbara, we do not have one. Would you like to start one? And I was like, I took a second. I was like, uh-oh, did I just make the wrong folk with it? <laughs> and then all the, after a while, I kind of calmed down. And I said, you know what? Yes, I do. I would like to start one because we have women here in the Midwest that are awesome, that I know that they are awesome. I haven't met some of them yet, but I will by starting this chapter. And we need this type of chapter so we can learn and grow from each other and become the ones for each other and build our businesses and our personal life. So yes, I want to start a chapter here. And it started March 15th, right on my birthday. Cause that's why I said our anniversary is coming around. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's coming around. So we'll be one year in March 15th. I'm so proud of the chapter and the ladies that have basically became members and the guests that come. We are building, we want to build more. So I, I don't know if this is like a commercial or a shout out, but I really, you know, if they, if, Women can come. That would be awesome. We meet once out the month. And um, believe me, you'll really get a lot out of it. And I'm just not saying that because I'm a chapter leader, but I know Manir could tell you and a lot of the ladies that are there, hopefully, that we are doing our best to empower each other. There is a lot of value. There is. And there's other women chapters that I've seen as well, but I've never attended, so I don't know what they are about. But I know that this one, even though the ladies, the sisters, um, they try to make it a point to show up here now that you've started the chapters. And I know you've met, you met Trisha and Nancy, I think. Yes, met, and yeah. Trisha. And so, I mean, they're pretty awesome women. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they don't have the air around that, that they, they are just high and mighty. They'll sit down with you and talk to you and they'll talk about why they became speakers and what went in their life, right? What yeah. happened in their life also. So yeah. that's pretty awesome too. And I yeah. Because usually when you have people that are like CEOs or companies, whatever, they'll say sign a contract and they won't even talk to you anymore. And you just do your thing and try to do the best you can within that chapter or, or franchise, if you want to call it. But they're always calling me. They're always sending me emails. They're always texting me, checking on me. I mean, these are women that are traveling all over the place all the time, everywhere doing so much with the other chapters too, and just not within the chapters, but within the organization as well. So they're, they're building as well. We only have, now we have 16,000 women that are part of the Women's Prosperity Network organization. That's a lot of women. 
and they have to manage all that and make sure. And then they sit there text me. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's nice to know that I am valued from them as we were talking about earlier. That, that, that's awesome. Yes, that's good. So one, if you were to go back and talk to your younger self, oh. <laughs> what would you say? What piece of advice? I would say, listen more to my mother. <laughs> and the reason why I say that, because my mother was, I always say she was, because she passed six years ago. She <laughs> was a tough cookie. And I mean, I'm being really nice about it. I can say some other things that I don't, because this is PG, but she was a tough cookie with me. I think that's one thing. I think that's one reason why I resonated to my father so much, because he was the one that was, okay, Barbara, it's going to be okay, and this and that. And my mother was like, no, you need to do this and this and this in in order to get through this world. You need boom, 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 boom. So she was always hard. Well, she always challenged me. I don't want to say hard. I could say hard when I was younger. Now I'm thinking about it all the time. She challenged me in a lot of areas because she did not want me to be in the same place where she was. She, she was raised in Mississippi. She was sent to Chicago when she was 10 years old. She uh, basically, the family, so-called quote family cousins, made her prostitute for money. Um, yeah, she did that for a minute until she found that she didn't want to do that. She moved away when she was 15 years old and she started her own small business in the Chicago area. Now, you're talking about in the mid 50s, 60s type of thing where, you know, with minorities, it wasn't easy. Still isn't to a certain extent, but it really wasn't easy back then. And for her to sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to make my own at that, that age, that young age, and not become a victim of, you know, what she was almost getting thrown into, uh, says a lot. So when she got older and she had me, she said, no, I don't want you having to struggle, do all the struggles. She had to work at a factory. She had to deal with different situations in her life. She dealt with different relationships where she thought she had to stay in one because she wasn't the brightest person because she, she didn't finish high school. So that's why she was so, like, she was double hard on me. And I always thought it was unfair. When I was, you know, when you're younger and you're getting yelled at by your mother, you're like, she's mean to me. She doesn't like me and all this kind of stuff. No, it was the total opposite. She loved me dearly. And before she passed away, she told me, she said, I did that not because for you to hate me, Barbara. I did that because I loved you so much that I wanted you to be so much better and get so much more than I had. And every day I think about that, you know, now she's gone, that I want to make her proud because um, she did she did it for a reason and I know why she did it. So. And you are, and you are. Thank you. Thank I have you. a similar story as mine, but my mom died when I was 12. Oh, wow. I lost her at a very young age, but even at that young age, I was not spared. You know, wow. uh, she drove me, you know, it sometimes felt like she hates me, like you yeah. said, yeah. but she didn't because she knew she had limited time on earth. She wow. had with asthma that turned into a double heart attack. Then very bad, very bad. And you know, when I talk, when I look now on the TV, when they have so many asthma drugs coming out, it's I feel angry sometimes as to why they didn't. Because they should have had, yeah, with your mother, yeah. But but you know, she drove me, and she shaped. You know, even though she, she I think in her wisdom, in her foresight, she made the foundation for me. So that was something that, you know, was awesome. I mean, I never got to talk to her and she never told me that she did this because of mm-hmm. certain things. But I know now that she shaped my foundation. You know, yeah. she she made me, she laid that foundation to make me who I was. And that that's, you know, pretty awesome because at that, you know, we would think that they were the women of the 30s and 40s. Mm-hmm. And what did they know? But they yeah. They had far They had to deal with what yeah, they had to deal with back then, yeah. And my mom was asked to leave school when she was in grade two, you know. Oh, see, yeah, my mother was in this, yeah. yeah so both. her love of learning has come into me and it's like my son the other day commented he goes, I've never seen you without a book or without anything. You always have something going on and I'm like, Yeah. I know. You you inspire me so much, Manira. I mean, when we first met I can just feel, I felt the connection right then and there when we first talked over the phone. Well, it's been over a year ago now I'm thinking about it. 
Yes. Um, and you just inspired me so much. I mean, you love to learn. And I was like, I thought I liked to learn. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I need to catch up with my <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot out there, you know, they say, yeah. Learn. Yeah. and it's always, I mean, yeah, sometimes I have funky facts in my head. There's just, you know, conversation starters or whatever. Mm -hmm. but those facts help too, you know, you have to learn. <laughs> conversation. You, you're, good, you're a good conversationalist because you have read books, you have learned so much that you can talk to people about things and then, you know, make us aware of stuff. I mean, you taught me some things. I was like, wow, really? I didn't know that. And then, you know, I start listening to you. You're like a professor for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be my own YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. You need to be a speaker. <laughs> we need One to talk. Day. I'm on my song. way there. It's yes, like, not a faster, but I'm on my way there. But see, this is what I like. I like I'm a curious personality. I like asking questions. I like to pry. And I know some people will say that you're you're too inquisitive, mm -hmm. but I want to know what makes people think. You know, mm -hmm. what is your reason is because you get out of bed. I mean, it's late. You're here talking to me. But um, you get out of bed just to see your WPN thing, your Toastmasters, you want to help and value other people. I do the same thing. So when I'm out on the streets and I'm doing something in the morning, I feel valued because, yeah. you know, maybe I'm an empty nester, the kids are gone, you know, and <laughs> not, I don't have that doting. I, I have the doting personality, but I don't have anybody to dote on. So mm -hmm. maybe I go out and do that for people. And but, dote on everybody else. <laughs> yes, I want to bring that value to people because you know what? We just have to do that. We, we do. women have to stick to with each other because if we don't, nobody else will. No. And we need to encourage, we got to keep encouraging, encouraging each other and saying that, you know, that's why I always tell women, I say, you're awesome. You're my angel. A lot of people are like, boy, you're, I'm your angel, but I'm this. You always say that. I say, you know why? Because I want you to always have that in your mind instead of saying, I'm not this, or I can't do this, or I can't, like the can't we were talking about earlier. Because that there's, you know, that's more of that in the world than the positive. So if you keep putting that in somebody's brain, like I said, the, the mind is powerful and it will react, your whole body will react to that. So that's why every time I see you or any of the other women, I'm always saying, you know what? I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. You're my angels. You know, you're just like, you know, I just can't say anything. I can't do anything without you guys. So I want to keep continuing that. We got to keep encouraging each other. Yes, we do. And we have to find each other's value so that we can tap into each other as well. Yeah. Yep. And that's how we find out. I mean, I didn't know my friend could crochet. I mean, I know how to crochet, but she does it a better job. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask her, I would never know, right? You never know. And now she can crochet you a, a sweater or whatever that you want. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, see? I can do things, you know, that are square. I can do uh, round things, but I can never shape into a sock or a mission. Or, or what clothing or anything, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I, I'm limited to that, but, but I cannot say I do not know how to crochet. I do, but I just can't make into a garment. That's fine. Garment, yeah. <laughs> and you know sometimes that's that's why you find the other person the one as we always say that can do that part of it and sometimes you know everything's not meant for everybody to do i mean i i'm not you know like me in marketing is like oh my god <laughs> i have to deal with that every day because you know i had to market woman's prosperity i have to market my my you know my professional speaking business i have to market me as a brand I never really studied marketing. I mean, I did it in college and stuff. You know, you do like some here and there stuff. But I'm talking about heavy, knowing how to know the niches where you need to find certain people and all that kind of stuff. No, I had to learn that. I, I, I've been learning that as I go. That's where we, we delegate. That's where we delegate and find the people that know how to do it better. And then they could take over or not take over, but do it. And then you could be doing what you're supposed to do. Yes. See, a lot of times we got on other people's hats and we shouldn't have all these hats on. No, yeah. that's I, I learned that the hard way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes if you don't have the funds, then you never know. You can find a college person. You can find an intern. I found that out, too. That interns are always looking to do projects with people like entrepreneurs and stuff because they want to grow, too. So if you need somebody to do some kind of social media stuff, look for an intern. They'll, they'll jump, at the, jump at it, and they probably won't charge you anything at all. Where do I find this intern? 
intern.com. I heard found, I just found that the other day I was at the professionals uh, group that I was at Sunday night. And I was like, well, you know, I need somebody to help me with this, but I can't afford like, you know, thousands of dollars. They say, you need to go to intern, intern.com. They always have people, they list what they do. And then you can just con- contact them and they'll be able to help you. See? I was like, oh, I didn't know that. There you go. Well, you had it. There you go. I love this. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Any last thoughts for our viewers? Well, the last thought I just want people to know, I'm going to end it like this, that I, when Monera told me she wanted to interview me, I said, me? And she said, yeah, you. You know how she is. She's so cute. Uh, and I said, okay, now what am I going to say? What am I going to do? She gave me some questions to answer. And then I said to myself, oh, no. Then I got all nervous, like, oh, God, this is an interview. I got to answer these questions. Let me study the questions. And then a little voice behind my head said, no, no. Put the questions to the side. Be you. You know you. You know what you do. You know what you want people to hear from you. I always say that voice that you have. So, Manira, I thank you for this interview because it taught me. See how we're still learning and growing? So it taught me to say, be yourself because no one can be you except yourself. And you got that. What is it called, Manira? I always say the diamond in you. Diamond in you, yes. Let it shine. So So I want to leave people with that, that they have a diamond in them. And please, please let it shine for others because somebody in this world is waiting on your diamond. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Well, thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you. And... We will, t- you know, if we have a phase two and we'll see how the, the people take this and if we want to learn some more, we'll do another interview then. I am willing and able. I'm here for them and I'm here for you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too.